Oh, how I love color so much. And so today's video, we're gonna be focusing on the beautiful things you can do with color for home decor crafts. Friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Heidi Sambal, and this is my DIY channel. I love crafting. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, I'm so glad you came back. All right, now let's get crafting. I was in the Dollar Tree and I came across this little muffin tin and I just had a fun idea. I decided to take that tin outside and I spray painted it white and while it was drying, let's pull our supplies out. I'm going to be using these realistic tulips. I'm going to link them down below. They're from Amazon. Some of the Spanish moss, some little lavender florals, and then these round foam circles. I'm going to cut them in half and put them down inside of my tin muffin pan once that paint was dry. We are going to turn this into a little spring garden where it has this really adorable farmhouse look and we're going to bring some color in. I know that it has been the trendiest thing for so long to do very neutral colors. Trust me, I love my neutrals too. But in the springtime, I need color in my life, especially when you're coming out of a winter. And maybe it's just the fact that I love flowers and I love gardening, but I just had to do this project where we have some really beautiful pink tulips with some beautiful purple lavender. Oh, anyway. So what we're doing is I'm just cutting down these tulips to be a little bit shorter and I'm sticking them down into these foam pieces that I cut in half and used E6000 and hot glue to glue them to the tin pan. So we got a real good bond to the pan. I am creating these tulips at different heights. On the back three rows, the tulips are a little bit higher and again, they're all different height. That's what makes it look like a real true wild garden, an English garden almost a cottage garden. And now I'm coming in with that lavender and I'm just being really whimsical with it, not overly stuffing these because that is what a cottage garden looks like. It's just all wild and it just brings in that spring happiness. So now I'm gonna come in with my hot glue and I'm going to glue on that Spanish moss. Now we wanna still see that this is a muffin tent. So it has that farmhouse country look and I'm just gonna tuck that down in there enough where you can see that it's a tin pan. And once I've got those all in there and tucked around, I can do so many fun things with this. You can add little eggs if you wanted to, maybe some little bunnies if you wanted to. I'm gonna just stick with my garden look but I hope you give this one a try. It is so affordable and so fun to imagine with. For this DIY, I'm gonna be using this beautiful Happy Easter Cottontails Farm Fresh Egg sign. I'm gonna be using some ribbon, this large 18 inch wreath form, and then a whole bunch of different florals. Most everything is from the Dollar Tree except for the really large peonies. I got that at the end of a Christmas sale. They have a little bit of frost to it on the floral, but you don't really even notice it when you bring it all together. And I got a killer deal for them, so we're going to use those two on this project. We're going to start by taking this burlap lace ribbon that you can get from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to just simply wrap it all the way around the whole wreath form. I like doing this because it makes it so much easier gluing your furrows on because you're not going to struggle with these holes and them falling through or having to zip tie anything. So I'm just going to coil that all the way around. It's not going to be able to reach all the way perfectly around. It gets real close, but we're going to cover that up with a bunch of stuff so you won't even notice it. Now I'm going to take my sign and I'm going to put the zip ties on the bottom side of the sign and I'm going to zip that right onto that wreath form. And I am going to just make sure I get both of them in place before I zip tie one side too tight because then it makes it hard to get the other one on. So just get it in place and then start to pull it tighter 
and then snip. And I push those little square pieces back down underneath so you don't have to see those. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a bow. Now you can see this is the easiest way to make a very big loopy bow. I'm zigzagging back and forth four times. I make sure that there's a tail on each end going the opposite direction. And then I take it and I'm gonna just gather it right in the middle and tie it around in a knot. That's it. <laughs> There are so many people who use all these different tools to make bows and you really could do that if you want to, but this works the same. I'm not kidding. Like you're going to see in the end, I'm going to have this beautiful bow on here and it was just me zigzagging back and forth with some ribbon. So if you're not great at tying ribbons, give this, give this a try. Like this is a really easy one to do. And then I'm going to just pull a zip tie through it and I'm going to put that around my form itself and I'm going to use that to be able to zip tie on there so that I don't have to worry about hot gluing it on and making a mess with all that hot glue and I'm just going to get it in position and then tighten it. Isn't that just the easiest bow ever? <laughs> so once you've got your bow on go ahead and fluff it out and look all we did was zigzag back and forth and tie a knot. Isn't that just the easiest bow ever and if you want to make more loops you just you know, keep zigzagging or you can double up bows, that works as well. Now I'm really slowing down this wreath process because sometimes I go a little fast with these and I know that there's a lot of beginning crafters who are looking for some spring inspiration. So I'm going to show you at this point how I build my florals. I get a lot of questions how I come up with my color combos. I really wanted to bring out all of those beautiful spring colors, especially on a front door. I just think that's a place where you really could put a lot of color. So I'm doing a softer peony pink flower. Then I'm coming in with a darker pink peony flower, almost like a salmon pink color. And now I'm coming in with some tiny little daisies. I think that these are so beautiful. They bring in that yellow and that white. And at this point now I wanna definitely bring in some more yellow. So I've got these smaller flowers. I think this is supposed to try to be like a ranunculus. Honestly, I think like the way that it looks, I think that's what they were going for at the Dollar Tree. And now I'm gonna come in with some of this salvia delphinium. I'm not sure what this flower exactly is supposed to be but it has that same long look to it. So I'm gonna just glue in a couple of those and now to bring in a little more pop of color and since there's a bunny on this, I thought it would be so pretty to work in some really bright orange carrots. And then I'm gonna come in with some ferns and some of these little mini roses. Friends, I wanted to show you in this video how much fun it is to layer and layer and layer. And that's what makes a gorgeous wreath. When you see wreaths at stores that cost like $200 or something crazy like that, it's because they're super layered and have all these different colors and florals. And you can get that look with things from the Dollar Tree. So on those ribbons, I came around the backside and I just kind of zigzagged that ribbon down longer on one side, shorter on the other. And now I'm going to do that same loopy technique that I did earlier for my ribbon. And I'm going to do that with some orange gingham ribbon. Now I'm going to come in with a button because I just love buttons. I mean, <laughs> have I not been doing that in quite a few videos lately? You can skip over the button if it's not your thing. But I'm going to add on a button and then I'm going to add on a little bit of twine right in the middle of that. And all of these together just, they make me so happy. I hope you give these techniques a try. I really do. On the backside, don't forget to add on your rope. And I always like to unfray the edges just a little bit to give it some more of that locked in security. And then to clean it up, I like to take some fabric, glue it over the top of it, and then I just trim around it to make it look really clean and high end finished. This project is gonna be so fast, so cute, and have such fun color to it. We're gonna be using this wood round, this bunny hang-up sign, and then a craft stick dowel. 
go ahead and take your bunny apart from that twine that was on the back of it and remove all those staples. Once you get those all removed, go ahead and take a drill, drill a little bit of a bigger hole where that hole already existed from that twine, and then just put that craft wood stick right down in there. That's honestly the most complicated thing about this project. We're not gonna be using any other power tools. It just needed for that one thing. Now we're gonna go ahead and glue on our bunny at the top of the stick, but we're gonna bring back in this really cute hippity hoppity on it as well. So go ahead and glue those on use some fabric to help lock it into place and clean up the backside. I added a little bit of hot glue at the bottom of that wood base and then I put on some of my Spanish moss and now I'm just simply taking some of those Dollar Tree carrots that I just love this season. They're so much fun to work with. I'm cutting off the tip so that they're three different heights and I'm just kind of twisting them down in there when I get some hot glue in that spot and you've got yourself an adorable decor piece. I hope these colors brought you joy and happiness today and that you will head into your craft room and give some color a try. Now don't forget I'm over on Instagram. Come on over and say hi to me. And don't forget to click the subscribe button if you're new and you haven't yet. And please do give this video a thumbs up. Now I'm going to recommend a couple of videos right here at the end. Don't forget to check out my mega video that I did with a ton of spring projects. And until the next episode, bye friends.